Eiffel. London, 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 London. Good afternoon everyone, welcome back to uh, probably one of our second home, Sheffield Arena, for a fight and a night at which we're absolutely buzzing about. Uh, this is it, aptly named, because this really is it, and we talk about eliminator after eliminator, I know we get accused of having a lot of eliminators, but this is a final eliminator for the mandatory position for the IBF world title. Just to uh, look down the table and explain to everyone who's on here tonight, on our far right, a man who really know, needs no introduction, former world champion, super middleweight legend, Robin Reed. Is that your phone, Robin? Or is that you, kid? Oh, <laughs> me. And uh, next to him, someone whose phone bill we're going to be cutting off shortly. <laughs> and uh, someone we're delighted to be working with on, on this event, Jamie McDonald's manager from the team, Kevin Sanders. To his left, another guy ch challenging for a final eliminator on Saturday night. Undefeated British Commonwealth European champion, Jamie McDonnell. To his left, leader of the Ingle Gym these days, the number one trainer, Sorry, definitely sir. in Winko Bank. Um, <laughs> Nowhere else. Dominic Ingle. To his left, the special one, Kel Brook. And Hector Saldivir. Joe Forbes, who's going to be uh, translating for Hector today. Robinson Zamora, who's Hector's trainer. And down on the, the far left, someone who finally gets his shot at the British title after what seems like 10 years of waiting, Kenny Anderson. We've got a packed bill on Saturday night as always and a, a real eclectic mix of our young prospects and domestic title fights, world title fights, world title eliminators. To say a few words, firstly, we're going to look at the first bout, which will be broadcast around 8.10, live on Sky Sports. Robin, can you say a few words about uh, your camp and this opportunity? Yeah, I'm totally looking forward to it. Um, you know, training's gone well. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be a great fight. Kenny's a good fighter, good come forward fighter. I'm a good uh, counter puncher, and he's got, he's got all the makings of a great fight. Um, <laughs> You know, as you know, I've been a former world champion. I never got a chance to do the normal route, which is British, European, then your world. So I'm not knocking it, don't get me wrong, but I never got a chance to, to fight for that Lonsdale belt, apart from Carl Frosch in 2007. But I was riddled with injuries then, and training hadn't gone right. Um, I'm looking to rectify that now. I've got my chance at the British title uh, against Kenny. I'm looking to win, that, uh, to, to win that fight, obviously, and then go on to, to win that Lonsdale belt outright. What gives you the motivation? at this age, after winning so much and achieving so much in the sport. I know you want it, bad. I speak to you all the time. I know, I know, but, you know, but seriously, you know, I mean, you've achieved so much, and I know how badly you want it, and how much you want to win on Saturday night. Yeah, well, I mean, what's it's, behind it? It's the, it's, the, it's the fact that it's the Lonsdale belt, you know, it's, it's British, being British champion, and like you say, all these people are looking towards fighting for world title, and I'm not being funny, but I, you know, I've been there, I've done that, and I, but I never got a chance to fight properly for that British you know, British champion, for to be British champion and win that Lonsdale belt and win it outright, you know, and that's something I've always wanted to do, you know, it's, it's, as mad as it sounds because I've been, I've got, I've, I've been where all these guys want to go, which is being a world champion, but I never really got the chance to fight for the British properly, you know, and I'm looking to rectify that, and I, you know, that's what I'd like to do, and I've got my little boy now as well, my little boy Oscar, he motivates me, you know, and it's like, um, I won all that before he come along. I just like to win something substantial, being the British title while he's here now. So good stuff. And Kenny, finally you get the chance. It's yeah, been a long road. Aye, it has. It's been a long road, but um, that's, that's got to make it all the better and when it does come. Um, you know what I mean? It's uh, stuff that's uh, strengthened my resolve. Um, and you know what I mean? This is uh, Robin's talking there about the stuff that he's done. He has. He's achieved the things I'd like to achieve. Um, okay. And uh, he's not done this, and this is obviously uh, something he's not got to do either. Um, so you see, um, this is my time. I know it's my time. I mean, people talk about their training camps, they talk about how well they went. Every boxer does that, that press conference. This has been a perfect training camp. Everything's went right. I've been right mentally, right in my home life, right in the gym, sparring, the lot, everything. It could have went better. I mean, this is my time. This has got to be my fight, and it's got to be a good one for the fans as well. I mean, I don't know, I don't know, go to the box for the fans. I, you know, I mean, I, I go to their plan, and I'm, I'm quite selfish in what I do. I 
but I mean this will inevitably be one for the fans, a good one to watch and a, an exciting fight, that can be assured. Good stuff, I think anyone who knows boxing knows that these two stubborn individuals will create one hell of a fight on Saturday night, good luck, good luck to both of you. Yes. In this poxy business that people call boxing, you, you inevitably get the odd letdown and on Friday night we had a phone call from South Africa to let us know that Busi Malinga uh, was unable to make the trip due to an injury to fight Jamie McDonald for the uh, IBF eliminator for the, for the bantamweight title. We phoned round probably every fighter in, in the rankings. Um, we were up all night Friday, all night Saturday, working with the IBF who I've got to say were fantastic in trying to make this happen for Jamie. And we're delighted to finally secure his opponent, Darwin Zamora, who I think stylistically would actually provide a better fight for, for Jamie um, than Vusi Malinga. Um, I think Jamie's probably moved into a bigger favourite in that fight, which has got his own pressures itself. But that fight now will still be an IBF uh, final eliminator for the world title. So we're delighted to make that happen after a, a tough weekend. And um, you know, when you look at the possibility of having to let a fighter down with news like that, it's always horrible. So we're delighted to get over the line. Jamie, talk about your camp. Talk about the change of opponent. Yeah, you know, uh, it's not the first time. I've had it a few times, you know. Most of my fights, uh, I've been let down. Um, but it's not a problem, he's a southpaw. Um, and, you know, this is a real big test. You know, he's knocked 18 out of 21 fights. You know, he's no mug and this is his chance, you know, to come win a fight for a world title. You know, they don't hand them out, he's going to come, he's going to be game. And, you know, I've just got to be on the ball. I've trained hard, I've had a good hard nine week camp. Uh, tough sparring, we went up <coughs> and I am really looking forward to it. You know, I'm going to go out there and prove, you know, I am the best out there. Uh, Donny Ev and Mayers, they've moved up, it's left it wide open. Um, and I do generally believe I'm going to be a world champion. Um, you know, just got to seal this fight and, you know, uh, look forward to a world title fight. And we spoke at Prize Fighter about the prospect of walking out in front of six, seven thousand people at Sheffield Arena. And I saw the look in your eye, you know, you must that's be buzzing just a few yeah, days ago. That's what it's here for. I told Kel um, at the media workout, I watched his fight back with Carson Jones and watched his ring entrance. And I was there for that fight, and that was, you know, was phenomenal the buzz you get from it. And, you know, I'm looking forward to my tune being blasting out, stood there soaking it up. You know, that, that's why we're in this game. and. I am really looking forward to it. I just can't wait to make a mark and you know, and, and do my thing. Good stuff. We look forward to that fight. Um, Zamora is actually in the UK now, and he'll be making his way up to Sheffield later on today. Um, we're going to pass to the, the challenger now for the main event um, to say a few words, translated by Joe Forbes. Please welcome Hector Saldivia. Bueno, primero que nada, muchísimas gracias por, por venir a todos los medios de prensa. Eh, nada, simplemente agradecido de, de estar acá, eh, la mejor preparación de, de mi carrera y bueno, como siempre lo decimos, eh, acá esto es un gran acontecimiento deportivo, sabemos que, que esto es así y esperemos que, que salga lo mejor posible, yo me preparé mejor que nunca para que sea un gran combate y si Dios quiere regresar a casa con un triunfo. Thank you for inviting me. I'm at the best form in my life. I've been waiting for this fight for a long time. I'm ready and I'm going to give a very good show for everybody in Sheffield. Um, it will be one of the best shows that's been put on here in Sheffield with Kelbrook. Joe, so can you ask Hector about what, what he knows about Kel, what he's seen about Kel, and what he thinks of him as a fighter and what he expects? Lo que tú sabes de Kel Brook, lo que tú crees él, ¿Y cómo, cómo te parece a ti, Kelbrook? No, estuvimos viendo los videos varias veces. El video de la última pelea versus Carson John lo, lo vimos reiteradas veces. Bueno, creo que ahí sacamos eh, muchísimo efecto ¿no? en, lo que, en lo que vamos a trabajar. Hemos hecho un gran trabajo. Eh, cinco meses trabajando en Estados Unidos, eh, haciendo sparring con boxeadores de primer, primerísimo nivel. Y bueno, como dije recién, me siento mejor que nunca, muy fuerte. Y para hacer un gran combate. I've been watching his uh, videos, his uh, DVDs, um, especially the Carson Jones fight. From that, we've taken everything on board. I've been five months in the States, sparring with the best boxers I could get, and I feel in great shape. I feel we're going to give him a very good fight, and if he wins, it's going to be very, very hard for him. 
Thank you. And uh, over to Dom. Dom, you might want to talk a little bit about the camp. I know that uh, we've spoke a little bit more than normal during this camp. And uh, just from my front, I want to thank you for all your time and effort putting in with Kel because this is just a different animal I see to my right here and uh, well done on everything. Yeah, there's no, there's no doubt about it. Are we on? Are we on? No doubt about it. Kel's had a fantastic 12 week training camp. He had uh, <clears throat> two weeks out after the course in Jones fight. Um, we sat down, Eddie, myself, Kel, uh, two guys, Dave Ember from uh, Sheffield Island University, who's a strength and conditioner, and uh, Dave Stash, who's a nutritionist. We looked at every point of Kel's performance, you know, what we thought went wrong in the last fight, all those issues have been addressed. And if Exus Olivier has, you know, based his fight plan on that last fight, it's you know, it's, he might as well be watching a different fighter because it's not going to be the same Kel Brook. You know, we hear this every time. You know, and every time you go into a, a fight, you see you've had the best camp ever. Uh, this has been the best camp ever. I mean, if Kel Brook um, and a train like this for course in Jones, the fight wouldn't have gone longer than four rounds. Uh, been in fantastic shape, been motivated, and you know, he's even changed his schedule now where, you know, he trains over the weekends, he has a day off in the week, totally changed his routine around, his attitude towards training has been totally different. He's been coming into the gym fully energised, been able to perform. Uh, we had a great training camp in Fort Aventura for two weeks. You know, every day was a hard day training. You know, and usually in them camps, kill somewhere in the middle of the pike performing. But this time he was right up there, right with the top two or three guys who were really fit. Every aspect of his training camp, his diet, his training, his sleep patterns, his hydration levels, everything's been checked. You know, if Kel was a shape, he'd be an hexagon because he can't cut corners on this one. You know what I mean? Every, everything's been analysed to death. Uh, and if he doesn't win on Saturday, you know, he might as well pack his gloves up because there's nothing else you could do, more you could do. Unfortunately for Hector Saldivia, he's going to meet Kel Brook at the top of his game. He's 26 years old, he's coming towards his peak. It's a world title eliminator. You know, there's big fights out there for Kel. There's world titles, there's the talk of Hatton and Carnes. And I think, you know, the, the, the switch has finally flipped with Kel and he's realised in order to have those big fights and be in that big mix, you know, he's got to train with the right attitude, the right mindset and the right goal in mind. And I think the last fight really did us a favour or did Kel a favour uh, in respect that it made him realise, you know, he needs to go up two or three levels in his training. And if he's not walking into the gym fully refreshed and ready to go, he can't really be put through his paces and get up to them performance levels. But this time, you know, he's got a resting heart rate of 38 beats per minute. That's like he's almost dead. It's that slow. And, uh, you know, the workload's what's been put on him. He's handled every single bit. Every single bit. And you can see he had the open workout in the middle of the week. I think everybody who came to that workout, when he took his shirt off, you know, realised the condition he was in, low body fat levels, he was absolutely shredded to the bone. You could see every bit of muscle separation. And, you know, you can't, get in sh you can't look like that unless you're in shape, no matter what anybody says. So Kel Brook, you know, on Saturday night is going to give the people a Sheffield, you know, a real fight. Yeah, it's going to be a good fight, like Hector says. And, you know, unfortunately Hector's not going to win that fight, but it will be a good fight. He'll put up a good performance. And I think Kel, Kel Brook will deliver the fight that people want to see. Thanks, Doc. Before we pass to uh, Kel, I know that uh, Darwin, uh, sorry, Robinson Zamora just wants to say a few words with, with Joe as well. <coughs> Primero que nada, muy buenas tardes a todos. Bueno, gracias por estar acá. Thank you very much for being us here. Estamos muy contentos eh, de estar eh, en este hermoso país, ¿no? Que es Inglaterra. To be in England. La verdad que nos sentimos muy cómodos. Eh, a mucha gente le comenté que era muy parecido a, al lugar donde nosotros vivimos. The weather is very much like where we live. Y bueno, eh, ¿qué más comentarle de Héctor El Tigre Saldivia, un profesional eh, 100%, un chico con una gran contracción al trabajo? Hector is a very good professional, 100% professional. Una gran educación. Has a good education. Y bueno, con él arrancamos hace 13 años. And we have 13 years with him. Para tener la posibilidad para eh, disputar un título del mundo. To try and put him on the way to a world title. Eh, hasta ahora no, nos ha ido muy bien. Until now everything's been good. Cada paso que hemos dado siempre sirvió para, para crecer. Every step we've taken, we've grown a little. Así que con Héctor, eh, el trabajo que venimos realizando. With Hector, we've realized the job ahead. Eh, no hemos cambiado nada de su conducta we y de su entrenamiento. Anything in training or his conduct. Sí, hemos eh, intensificado 
We have intensified el trabajo con los sparring en los Estados Unidos uh, the sparring we did in the States porque es muy difícil because it's very difficult en un mes in one month cambiar un boxeador to change a boxer. Héctor trae esta conducta desde hace tres años que quiere ser campeón del mundo. Héctor ha tenido esta manera por 13 años ahora. Así que bueno, para el día sábado seguramente For todos Saturday, everybody, verán un gran combate we'll see a very good fight, donde se van a enfrentar dos grandes gladiadores with two good gladiators. y bueno, como hemos, hemos venido comentando no solamente nos sirvió el, el video de Kel Brook contra Carson Jones the only the, um, the video we saw of Kel Brook with Carson Jones sino lo que nos llenó de satisfacción everything we, we were satisfied with es el gran respeto de la gente que vimos is the respect of the people y el gran trabajo que hizo el árbitro el árbitro sobre el ring and the um, the work the uh, referee did in the ring y eso nos reconforta and this gives us comfort porque al final de cuentas for everything eh, esto es un gran deporte this is a, a good sport donde los boxeadores empiezan when the boxers start casi siempre a los golpes uh, the blows y terminan abrazados. And they finish by hugging each other. Así que bueno, muchas gracias por su thank you for everything. Eh, calidez y por su gran respeto. And thank you for your respect and everything else. Gracias. Thank you very much. And uh, I'd like to give you uh, like a, a warm round of applause for Sheffield's number one son, the special one, Kelbrook. Um, I just want to thank uh, Edda for, uh, for getting me in this position, you know, when we started out we always wanted to become world champion and go down the IBF route and uh, this fight is very, very important for me and the team, you know, we're one step now away from becoming world champion and, uh, you know, if, if, Hector, if Hector's gone on the last performance with uh, Carson Jones, like Don was saying, that, that worked me in there, obviously things have been addressed going to be a complete different animal in there. This is the best I've ever felt for any fight. 17 years me boxing, this is the best I've ever felt. I meet, I'm eating, I'm eating good up to this fight and weighing Friday, drinking plenty. You know, best shape I've ever been in. Uh, best recovery time in training. Been sparring with middleweights, you know, it's been it's been a 12 week, 12 week camp. Been in Future Ventura, training in the heat, you know, and you know, I'm not the always, I'm not the the fastest runner or and everything like that. But in in this training camp, I'm I'm coming I'm coming in you know in top position like like Dom say I'm pushing myself like I've never pushed myself before because I, I want this more than ever. And uh, you, you, if you see me in the gym, you could you can see I've, I've got the eye of the, eye of the tiger for this fight. And uh, you know there's, there's not been no stone unturned. So this Saturday night, you're gonna see the best Cal Brook you know, and uh, I'm sure that's maybe good enough to take care of uh, Hector Saldivia. Thank you. Thanks guys, we're going to have one-on-one um, -on -one pictures shortly, head to head, then we're going to break for one-on-one. Just two things to say very quickly. Now, I've got to take my hat off to Kel Brook because after the Carson Jones fight, you know, I knew going into that fight, having spent the, the last few days with him leading up to the weigh-in, that, that was going to be a hairy night if it went past six or seven rounds. When he broke his nose in the seventh round, I really started to panic. You know, when you sit there, you know, 10 or 11 rounds, not only do you think about your financial investment, but you also think about your mate. And how he dug in that night, you know, bearing in mind the pain that he was in and also the exhaustion that he was under that people might not have realised on the night, shows me that other than phenomenal skills, he's got plenty of heart, a great chin, and just bundles and bundles of courage. And after that fight, you know, I went straight up to his house, sat down with Terry, I've got to say, Terry, I know you've had a bit of stick from former promoters about being a bit of a pain in the ass, but I don't think he could want a be better old man to look after him, you know, in his career, because you want the best for him. And we sat down and, you know, we really analysed what needed to be changed. But most of all, we needed to know if Kel Brook wanted to change. And the answer was yes, 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 but we needed to see it. And, you know, Dom has kept him on a leash for this camp, but that leash has just come off a little bit in the last couple of weeks because it hasn't needed to be there as much because we've seen Kel embrace these new changes, we've seen him enjoy his new diet and enjoy the performances that he's been setting himself in training.
he realises now the animal that he can be, and we know what he can be. I can tell you now, in any fight you've seen Kel Brook in, I do not believe you've seen even 60% of what this man can achieve or deliver. And I think now we're on the road to really becoming a great fighter, because if you want to be a pound for pound champion, you've got to prepare like one. And Kel has done this on the camp, and I'm very proud of what you've done. You've got your nut down, and you know now you've got to go and do the job, finish it off, and go and show the world what you're all about, because we want those big fights. You know, 15 months ago, Kel Brook had his first fight with us, 15 months. This will be his sixth fight with us in 15 months. And we had a plan, straight away with Terry, to become a mandatory challenger for the title. That's all we wanted to do. We didn't want a small purse, we didn't want to give away options. We wanted to become a mandatory challenger and control our own destiny. We started off at Hillsborough Leisure Centre against Love Morondon. He was shaking. He was asking me what I thought, whether he'd get a good reception. We sold out with eight weeks to go. They said he couldn't sell a ticket. We went from there to Ponchforge, then we took the ultimate gamble and we moved to Sheffield Arena against Matthew Hatton. We had 10,000 people. Now, from there, against Carson Jones, who's a much lesser name, many people would take a backward step. We didn't. We stayed at the arena, we grew and grew. We'll have 30 or 40% more people in there on Saturday night than we had for the Carson Jones fight. People believe in Kel Brook. He's breaking record viewing figures on Sky. The fans want to see him. This is a superstar in the making, and now he's prepared like a superstar. And I can't wait to see what you're going to see on Saturday night. So come along. People of Sheffield, I want to thank you for your support. There's not many people in the country that can sell tickets like Kel Brook. We appreciate that this is an ultimate fight and a necessity of a fight. And whilst Saldivir might not be known to the masses, we know what kind of challenge he's going to possess. He's got the opportunity of a lifetime. So has Kel, so has Jamie. It's going to be a great card. Come down, enjoy it. Watch all our youngsters. Kel Yafai, he's sitting over there. Remember that name, he's going to be a world, world champion within three years, no pressure. He's got his first big step up on Saturday night against uh, Leeds kid Scott Gladwin. We've got Scotty Cardle, Martin Ward, David Howe, Tyrone Nurse, and uh, Young Phillips is making his debut as well. It's going to be a great bill. Thank you always for your support. It's much, much appreciated. We're going to have some head-to-heads now and then break for one-on-ones. Thank you very much.